This video looks at encapsulation. Um, so what is encapsulation? Well think about the situation where you might be watching a TV or you might be listening to the radio and you want to change the channel. So what you'll probably do is you will press one of the preset buttons on the radio or you might use the remote control of your TV um, and you'll be able to change the button, uh, sorry, change the channel with the click of a button. Now behind the scenes what the TV and radio is actually doing is a lot of technical stuff. They're changing the frequency, scanning the airways, uh, changing the frequency so that you can connect to another channel. But all you see and experience as a user is just the pressing of a button. Um, so the reason for this is because the user doesn't need to be concerned with the actual frequency value. It's not important to them. Um, and this is kind of an example of encapsulation. So if we have a look at object orientated programming um, we'll understand encapsulation a little bit more related to how we might program in Python. So encapsulation and object orientated programming is incredibly important and it's important for this reason. Imagine you've just created a bank account class and you're going to create some bank account objects for a high street um, cash machine and you've got this attribute called current balance. Now you want to keep that current balance safe you don't want um, the user of an ATM to be able to access it, you don't want um, programmers to be able to access and overwrite it perhaps accidentally, perhaps on purpose uh, with an obscene amount of money. So what we want to do is we want to make that attribute private uh, to anyone trying to access it outside the class directly. Now the way that we can do that is quite simple. Let's just consider this example first of all. We've got a bank account class and we've got two attributes, account name and we've got balance. I've created a bank account object and all I want to do is I want to access these two attributes directly and print them out. So if I do that, you can see that it correctly takes the value of current account and presents it to the screen and the, uh, the value of balance and pre uh, presents that to the screen as well. So those two values are printed out. Now to make these values, these attributes, sorry, private, all I need to do is put double underscore at the front of the account, uh, of the attribute. So now, if I try and access these attributes, let's see what happens. I'll run it internally so we can see the error. It says here that bank account object has no attribute underscore underscore account name, but we know that it does. So what's actually happened is that this has been turned private so that we can't access it from outside the class. And that's incredibly important. So let's see why that is important. Well, what I could do is I could override the account object dot balance and I could set it to an obscene amount of money. I could then print that out. And you can see here that the values have been changed. By making these values private, it means quite simply that this cannot occur. So if I now run it internally again, okay, immediately you get that error. We cannot access these attributes because they're private. Now the way around it, because obviously we do want our programs um, to be able to access certain attributes private attributes from classes. It's important if someone withdraws some money we want the balance to be able to reduce. So how do we do this? Well by making an attribute private what we can then do is we can actually only access these private attributes from within the class itself. So using methods inside the class and these methods are called getters and setters. So a method from inside the class can access the attribute if it is private. So let's have a look at an example of that. So here you can see that we've got a balance getter method and that can print out the balance. It's private from outside the class but from inside it'll be able to access it and print it out to the screen. So if I call that method, that getter method, I will be able to see the balance. Similarly, if I was to call the balance setter method, I'll be actually able to um, alter that balance. Even though it is a private attribute and I can't access it from outside, I can call a, f a method from outside which will in turn change the balance accordingly. So in this case it's going to ask for a value, I'm going to pass that value that I want to withdraw into the 
um, balance setter method and if the value is less than the balance then it will subtract it and present the new balance back to the screen otherwise it will say you don't have enough funds so here is an example not only of limiting the access that you can have to these private attributes but also it validates how you can use them and that's really really important so let's run this program and see what happens so it says here check account balance okay 200 pounds withdraw funds how much would I like to withdraw 150 pounds giving me 50 pounds back or left even. So if I then check the uh, check the account balance, it gives me fifty pounds, which is obviously correct. And if I want to withdraw more money, I could press um, two. It says how much do I want to withdraw? Let's say I want to withdraw fifty one pounds, and it gives me an error message: you don't have enough funds. So here's an example of encapsulation in Python.